Let's clear some emotional clutter as we continue our month focusing on 10 minute tips to declutter your life. Today on Clearing the Clutter Inside and Out, we are tackling emotional clutter by feeling our feelings. Do you avoid your feelings? Are you afraid to express your feelings for fear of what others might say? Do you think you have dealt with an emotion around an event only for it to pop up later? Listen as we offer tips to clear clutter through feeling. Are you overwhelmed by clutter? Looking to organize your life? Do you feel stuck and are ready for a change? Every Tuesday at 1 p.m., join award-winning professional organizer and coach Julie Caraccio on clearing the clutter inside and out as she supports you in navigating the waters of decluttering your life and getting organized. Julie thinks outside the box and examines clutter in all areas, physical, mental, emotional, spiritual, energetic, and more. Ready to live a more joyful and fulfilling life? It's summer for most of my listeners. Like me, you probably would rather be at a pool, on a vacation, hanging out in nature, or relaxing and soaking up some sun. Just because summer is in full swing, you don't have to kick your entire clearing your clutter routine to the curb. July was such a hit last year, I decided to do it again, focusing on new 10-minute tips for clutter-free living. You can check out last year's July episodes for more fast tips to declutter your life. This is one of those shows for me that I hope you are able to do in some way, shape, or form. Working on feeling my feelings has had a huge impact on my life. If you've listened to my earlier episodes, I talk a lot about emotional eating, which is something I've struggled with for years. This is one of the things that is helping change that for me. Why we avoid feelings. We avoid some feelings because they don't feel good. Grief, loneliness, heartbreak, and outrage. Other emotions that we create through the stories we tell ourselves, such as guilt, shame, depression, and emptiness, aren't fun either. Who wants to feel yucky feelings? Research has shown that suppressing or avoiding your emotions, in fact, can make them stronger. So if you're sad because you broke up with your boyfriend or girlfriend, but want to avoid feeling sad, you may watch funny TV shows and movies or act as if the breakup didn't occur. The sadness is still present in your mind and in your body as we store emotions. Everything is energy. Something minor may cause you to fly off the handle. Even if you were avoiding sadness, it may come out as anger. Suppressing emotions is your body's way of protecting you during trauma. Emotional release in a non-traumatic situation is your body's way of protecting itself from further damage and releasing stuck emotions. How feeling our feelings supports us. While it isn't fun to feel unpleasant feelings, they actually help us. They intuitively know something is wrong, like cancer. Many people were expressed they knew something was off in their body, but chose to ignore what they were feeling. If we check in with ourselves, our feelings let us know if we are not on the right path. At a fork in the road with your career? Check in with your body and how you are feeling about the choices. They also alert us if something is dangerous. I ignored my feelings and was a victim of a violent crime. I do a lot of journaling, and about a year after it happened, I discovered I had written about it. I noticed that something was off, but I couldn't quite put my finger on it. By not being in touch and acknowledging my feelings, I suffered harm. By feeling our feelings, we can see where we need to create boundaries and whom we let into our life. They help us learn to say no and have better self-care. Feel the feelings. First, give yourself permission to feel. You are allowed to feel whatever you need to. Try not to judge an emotion as good or bad. For example, anger can serve as a great catalyst for change. Women would have never had the right to vote if Susan B. and all of her friends weren't really angry. It's important to remember that unpleasant feelings are a part of life. We can't avoid them through resisting them. What you resist persists, said Carl Jung. If we accept our feelings, it allows us to deal with them more successfully, and once we do that, we can release them. What I mean is, sitting with your sadness or anger or guilt or shame and really feeling it. 
know that it won't last forever. When I ended a long relationship, I cried for about 20 minutes, howling, sounding unhuman. When I finished, I knew that my grief was over. That isn't to say that a tinge would pop up every now and then, but when I fully felt my heartache, I was able to release it. Prior to clearing the clutter inside and out, I interviewed a lot of people on my internet TV show, Reawaken Your Brilliance. All of them said it was harder to suppress feelings than it was to release them. I wholeheartedly believe this as well based on my own experience. When you feel your feelings, this allows you to not act on your pain, such as hitting someone or abusing yourself. Once released, you can channel it into something healthy, such as writing or dancing. Also, when we don't feel anger or guilt, people can keep us oppressed and in their power. No matter where you stand politically, in America, people are angry. People are becoming angry enough to demand change. Are you feeling stuck? Does your mind always seem to go a million miles a minute? Can you easily navigate the ups and downs of life? The journey of a thousand miles begins with one step. As a lifestyle coach, Julie supports you in your self-development and well-being by showing you how to declutter your life. She considers herself a CPO, Chief Possibility Officer, because our possibilities are endless. Ready to take the next step? Schedule a free 30-minute consultation. Learn more at reawakenyourbrilliance.com. Now the fun part. The first thing I do is lay down quietly and check in with my body. I try and ask questions to see if anything needs to be expressed. Sometimes I get a response, sometimes I don't. If I don't, I simply start to breathe and go from there. I like breath work to feel my feelings. I have a variety of different breaths that I use. I do breath and movements such as shaking my body while making sounds. I like to do this in our bed when no one else is around so I can be as loud as I need to be. If that isn't an option for you, use a pillow. You can scream really loudly and forcefully into a pillow. Emotions are energy and want to move, so do what you can to allow them to do that. I also like to get physical. I have a blocker that someone holds and I wear gloves that I use to punch. I had a friend Stinky I used to do this with all the time. He knew exactly what to say to get me really angry. The good news is I was exhausted when I was done fighting because I had released so much. Maybe for you it is a spinning class that allows you to feel your anger and burn a lot of calories. With dancing you can make sounds and move as well. Journaling also might be an option as well as simply screaming at the top of your lungs. There are many different ways that you can become in touch with your feelings. Set aside some time to test out a few things. The more you do this the easier it becomes. I have found with a regular practice, I'm able to let go of unpleasant feelings more quickly, as well as I don't get thrown off or have knee-jerk reactions as much. Post feeling. This can be really intense. Plan a fun or relaxing activity afterwards. Maybe order takeout or have already made your next meal. I am a fan of a good bubble bath. Have a plan in place for you when you've completed this exercise. I encourage you, if you are unable to do something the first time you tried this, not to give up. Keep doing an exercise until you find you are able to release feelings. Important note, we can avoid feelings for good reasons. For example, children who have been abused are usually very good at this. If you have avoided your feelings, beginning to feel may be very difficult for you. You could bring up some unburied trauma. Please, please, please take good care of yourself. Seek professional help, a trusted mentor, or good friend to support you during this process. Have a list of people you can talk to or possibly do these exercises with, or a professional who would work with you on these issues. It is important to have a safe and loving support system in place in case anything does come up. Takeaways from today's podcast. Research has shown that suppressing or avoiding your emotions, in fact, can make them stronger. While it isn't fun to feel unpleasant feelings, they actually help us through better boundaries, alerting us if something is wrong or if there is danger, and if we are doing what we need to be doing. 
Feelings can bring up strong emotions and even buried trauma. Seek professional help, a trusted mentor, or good friend to support you during this process. Go out, clear the clutter to create the life you choose, deserve, and desire. Ready to clear clutter and share your gifts with the world? The journey of a thousand miles begins with one step. So what step will you take today? Sign up for our newsletter and receive a free copy of our 10 Steps to Clearing Clutter. Julie Caraccio provides coaching, professional organizing and speaking, organizing classes, positive affirmations, and her unique How to Declutter Your Life course. Learn more at reawakenyourbrilliance.com. Subscribe to Clearing the Clutter Inside and Out and join us next Tuesday at 1 p.m.